Hello and welcome to the Three Will Podcast. This is your host, Danny Ryan, and today I have a group of people here with me. I've got four people in the room, and uh, I'm pretty excited about doing this podcast. I have two interns and someone else from Three Will and myself, and we're going to talk today about something that they worked on this summer. It's called Ledger, and so we'll get a little bit more into what exactly that is. I'm going to have them do a quick intro, I'll, you know, just what your name is and what your role is and anything else you want to say at all. You don't have to say anything else if you don't want to. Real. Right. Uh, my name is William Holland and I've uh, been here at 3 Wheel. I'm a software engineer and uh, I love Danny. Oh, thank you, Will. That was so <laughs> nice. <though. laughs> You love being this close to me, right? Yeah. You, yeah. I notice how as soon as you talk into the mic, you back away a little bit. It's <laughs> all right. I'm not going to hold your hand, dude. <laughs> okay. Up next, come on. You can you can you step right up to the mic. Hello, I'm Luke Perrin. Um, I'm an intern for the summer. I go to Southern Polytechnic State University. Excellent. Or as it or as it is now called, Kennesaw University. Kennesaw University. Welcome. <laughs> Excellent. And finally. Uh, hi, I'm Jared Daniel, uh, intern here. I'm from Georgia Tech, and I actually love Danny even more than Will. Oh, ho, 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 ho. another Georgia Tecker. Here I didn't realize this was going to turn into a love triangle. This, this is a love triangle. All right, we got re Georgia Tech represented in the room. That's very nice. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks. Thank you guys for taking the time to do this. We're you're wrapping up your internship here. What? In that, in that, within the next couple weeks, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. This week, actually. This week? And you're out of here. Is that why you guys are so happy today? It's like, it's your last week. Oh, yeah. They were really excited to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's. why don't we get this uh, kicked off, and Will, I'll direct these to you initially. And you guys feel free to jump in if you'd like to. Um, so Ledger, what, where did this thing come from? What's, give me the backstory on what Ledger is. Yeah, so uh, Ledger is a SharePoint inventory tool, mm -hmm. uh, a way for you to take a look at all of the different site collections you have in your uh, Office 365 tenant or your on-premise farm. Okay. Uh, you can get some data points, like how big, uh, how much data a particular site collection has, how many list items, nice. who owns it, those sort of things. Nice. Um, the idea came from a previous project we were on. We were doing a, a large-scale migration and we sort of uh, developed a similar process for inventorying these things, and okay. um, it was sort of uh, done in a hastily way, okay. uh, and we wanted to uh, refine that process a little bit and uh, make it reusable, something that we could potentially give to future clients okay. uh, to help them with doing some migration analysis or just wanted to keep tabs on things in their farm. Um, in the end, we decided to actually make it open source. So this cool. is now on GitHub, uh, github.com slash three will, and mm -hmm. it's uh, called Ledger on there. So uh, check it out, contribute. We'd be happy to have that. So how does somebody get started with this? Is this, um, just walk me through that process. Somebody might be interested in doing an inventory and uh, do they go to the GitHub site to yep. get started here? Yep, uh, so for now you go to GitHub and download the source code. Unfortunately, uh -huh. we don't have a, uh, a packaged EXE right now. So okay. uh, you'd have to download the source code and compile it. We will be fixing that hopefully sometime in the near future, but uh, there's two components to it right now. There is a, uh, for the, on premise version, you have to run a uh, one executable that'll go through and actually build the list of all the the site collection URLs. Okay. And then there's a second component which can be run from anywhere that will go through and, and get all of the various data points. So it, you would run that first exe if you had an on premise. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then if you were on Office 365, it's just the second part. Then it's just that sec second part. Correct. And that second part, what is that? What do you run? Is it like a command line utility? Or is it what is what are you running? Is it right now? It's just an executable. It's um, still an yeah, executable yeah. that's run so, against yeah, Office three sixty five. Correct. Yeah, you would okay. download it in any laptop, uh, or Windows laptop, I should say. Okay. Um, you would run it from there, and as so long as you have access to SharePoint Online, you can get any of that data. So there's two executables that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the executable is just getting, you're just supplying to it some credentials to go and do the inventory? 
Yeah, uh, Jared actually programmed the, right. the bit of the interface, so I'll let him speak to everything that what goes is, into it. But yeah, username and password are definitely part of it. So, so I'm using this for the first time, and I guess let's just take the, uh, what's the easier one to go after, the on-premise or the Office 365 version? Uh, most of the on-premise. The on-premise. So I'm logged, so I'm using the on-premise version of this. This is, uh, I'm, this is not going to be a tough question. So I'm using that. What am I supplying to it? Some credentials? Uh, what, what am I doing? Yeah, so you're going to need an uh, account that has access to all of your SharePoint sites. So, okay. And as long as you have that, as username and password is all you need to put in. And okay. then you can just, those are the only two parameters, you just run it from there. Okay. And then that starts um, going out and inventorying and then writing it to a list? Or what is that doing when it does that inventory with the on-premise one? Yeah, it goes to a SharePoint list. Okay. So you would have a... Uh, SharePoint site set up and it would generate the list for you. You don't have to like create the list and okay. all the different fields. It'll do all that for you. Okay. And just populate it with all of your uh, data you get from your sites. So it right. So then you um, run that and then you've got some custom list that's populated with a bunch of information about your site collections. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and then. Um, so that's is that that's the on-premise version. Is the is the Office three sixty five version? It, is it doing something different, or what? What? How is that doing? I'm still, uh, I'm a little confused still about the difference between the two. Sure. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's easy to be confused right now. The only functioning part we have is for the on-premise version. That's what these guys have been working on okay. all summer. Okay. The uh, the only difference between the on-premise version and the Future, I'm okay. using air quotes there. Okay. Um, the future online version is just the removal of the on-premise part. Okay. Um, on-premise versus SharePoint Online, uh, you have to have that server component to get the uh, the actual URLs for every site collection. SharePoint Online is much easier. Okay. Uh, it just hasn't actually been coded yet. Okay. So it's something that eventually is just going to be one executable that you're using, or will there always be two? Uh, there would always have to be two. There would always have to be two. Okay. And then, so I'm using the online version one. Am I still just pr supplying credentials to that and it goes and does the same thing or? Yeah, the, uh, the only difference would be you'd have to give it a URL. Okay, so I point it to a specific URL and it goes out and it. Yeah, you'd have to point it to your SharePoint tenant. Okay, excellent, excellent. So what, um, so somebody is, let, let me get this sort of the why somebody would want to download this. So they want to get an idea of, um, of what's in a specific, and this is multiple site, it can crawl multiple site collections, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and then you're going out, and give me some examples of some of the, you you'd mentioned some of them a little bit earlier, but maybe a little bit more details about, does it do things like take a look at what's been customized, does it look at workflows, does it look, what is it, what sort of information is in the inventory itself? Uh, so there is quite a bit of information, a few that I mentioned earlier, uh, mm -hmm. list items, and guys, jump in if mm -hmm. I'm missing anything. Uh, so there's list items, the number of lists, document okay. libraries, uh, which kind of go into that one total. Um, it'll tell you how many workflows there are. Okay. The uh, customization, that was a feature that we had in our previous project, uh, and something that we tried to get these guys to go after, and mm -hmm. it ended up being a little, uh, little more complicated than we had time for. I know, didn't we get the, uh, the custom solution stuff in? Yes, yeah, we got that in. Okay, so it, it will detect if you have a custom farm solution okay. uh, on a, a site collection. Um, what else is there, guys? Uh, um, in place information management, I remember it does have that. So let me think what else. Um, you worked on the taxonomy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, global taxonomies, uh, taxonomy that's shared between different site collections. It tells you if it has any of those so that you'll know for migration purposes if you need to copy that. Um, I it also had um it also had just tells basically if you have taxonomy terms that are only for that one site. Okay. Okay. So, so somebody so lots of great information and they they would use this in order to determine about upgrading to to SharePoint twenty sixteen or moving to Office three sixty five right that's what they're going to be using this information. For. Yeah, that's that's the primary business case that we have for it right now. Okay. As, as you're looking to do a migration, you want to get a sense for what you have out there. Help nice. you uh, kind of determine how long it's going to take, how much money it might cost, nice. something like that. And so we put it out on GitHub just so that the world can, the community can go use this. If somebody sees something they want to add to it, they can go add to it. 
all that good stuff that comes from open source, correct? Yep. Yeah, it was uh, something that we had a, uh, a great experience learning from on that previous project. And uh, we thought it was a useful tool, and we yeah. thought it was something that we would definitely use again in the future. And just as sort of a way to share that knowledge that we gained from that project mm -hmm. with the, the SharePoint community, we wanted to go ahead and put it on GitHub. Nice. And so you guys will probably be keeping an eye on contributors, seeing who's actually using this once it takes off and goes viral, right? Yep, that's Never. absolutely right. That's uh, <laughs> well, on my to-do list every like... <laughs> day. Check, check for new contributors. Um, it'll be interesting. This, this, this is the first time we... Well, there was one other thing I thought I saw in our GitHub. Uh, that it, it was from, a, I think, like it was a... It was a one of the like internal meetings that we had that we were doing like on Fridays where we doing yeah we had a, a hackathon and hackathon, we were right. using GitHub for that yeah. and that's usually kind of been the the limited use of GitHub for us internally okay. is just for little fun projects that we'll do sometimes um, we use more private source control for clients uh -huh. uh, and we, we don't have a private GitHub account so everything we do on there is public so nice well, congratulations, guys. How's it feel to put something out there? Does it, it a little bit of uh, now that the I guess the world can see all your code? That's a that's a, I don't know. I don't know if the world wants to see. When I was coding, I didn't want the world to see my code. Does that make you guys a little nervous? Yeah, Will wanted me to clean up my code. <laughs> you could, I tried. Excellent. Yeah. There's no saving my code. There's no. <laughs> Being humble. Oh well, yeah, yep. Well, it's uh, it's nice to have something out there. It will be. I I look forward to seeing how much it's used on upcoming projects for us. It would be interesting to see if other, you know, I guess other consulting companies can use this as well, just to sort of get inventories of stuff. And hopefully, we'll get some contributors from them, and then probably larger enterprises who want to use this as well. Um, are there, there are there other tools out there to do similar things than this? Did you look into that at all, or? Yeah, so there is a a, a well known tool that uh, we learned about, or I learned about on that previous project called Casal. Okay. And it's a very heavyweight uh, licensed product that okay. uh, does everything that we were trying to do and a whole lot more. Um, but again, it's not a a free product like what we put on GitHub. So. <laughs> So this is more of a lightweight version of yeah, what that does. Yeah, uh, Casal, from my understanding, has a lot of reporting capabilities. Uh -huh. Will tell you that this is a very complex site. This is a very easy site to migrate. Our tool just kind of says, "Here's all the data points." Gotcha. Uh, so you can kind of formulate your own opinions from that. Uh, but again, it's free. I guess with now, so it's in a if it's in a custom list. I'm just sort of playing this through. Somebody can take that data and pull it into an Excel spreadsheet or do different things that everybody can do within. A yep. custom list in yeah. SharePoint. Yeah. Once it gets into a custom list, you have the full power of SharePoint behind it, so you can uh -huh. do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. Put it in a workflow, do an Excel, uh, export to Excel, uh -huh. all sorts of stuff. Uh -huh. Well, excellent. Great. I appreciate the overview there. Now, guys, what were some of the things, uh, what did you learn, anything that you picked up uh, learning-wise from being on this project? Um, you did learn something this summer, correct? Uh... <laughs> I know. Uh, I honestly, I hadn't been exposed to SharePoint at all before this. Okay. And it was pretty cool to see, like, a tool that a lot of businesses use uh -huh. on their back end. Uh-huh. Um, and it's honestly a lot more complicated than I thought it would be, but yeah. that's what the summer was for, is for learning all about that. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So it was um, getting some new exposure to... SharePoint, yeah, you know, there's not going to be like a Georgia Tech. You're not going to have any classes <laughs> where you're learning about the SharePoint object model and I don't think so. And all uh, CSOM and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, you get to look forward to that in your career after you're done at Tech. You get to deal yes. with some of this, the kludgy stuff, right? But yeah. uh, well, good, some good exposure for you to get. That's excellent. So excellent. So what about over there? Um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm in the same boat as Jared when yeah. I started. I had no idea what SharePoint was uh -huh. at all. So having to learn how to code for SharePoint on top of having to code for the first time in about four semesters <laughs> was rather um, entertaining. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so good, good. And um, and uh, you guys, did you pick anything up? Because you were, you were, you were running, um, were you using Scrum to develop this at all? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. 
yeah. a touch. You were using the the S and the C part. Uh, of yeah, we scrum. did. We did a few uh, sprint did you have sprint plannings and stand ups. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's good. Did you, did you have daily stand ups for the first while, yeah, and then things changed. <laughs> And then life occurred. I'm a terrible scrum master. Oh, what can I say? Oh, where it comes out. Now it's been, <laughs> that's been fully documented now. Oh, well, for posterity to see. Oh, well. Um, did you guys, is it, well, let me ask you guys, uh, for the interns, was this your first experience with using an agile process like scrum or have you picked that up in school or where, what's your experience? Yeah, this was the first experience for me. Okay. Um, I had, there were a few meetings we had about just explaining the process. Mm-hmm. It took me a while to, figure out why it was even helpful, mm -hmm. but I can see how that's a lot better than the waterfall approach. Gotcha. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, same so boat again. Um, I, and throughout school, they've just kind of shoved the waterfall method down our throat, and I actually like this a lot better. Mm -hmm. It just kind of flows a bit easier and is a bit more useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. I think the one way of looking at agile and Scrum is you're do, you're it's you're doing a lot of really short waterfalls, so it's it's just quicker feedback on the whole cycle, which is always a good thing to to get. So, well, cool. It's good good for you guys to get some exposure. So, uh, so this is the last week, huh? And it's uh, what was one of your favorite things about the internship? Uh, Besides the uh, three musketeer bars in the refrigerator or whatever, or free coffee or whatever, what was, was there anything that you really liked about the internship? Uh, shout out to Will for oh. coaching us through all this and putting up with our dumb questions. Nice. Um, yeah, I would probably be sitting at the beginning of this project still if I weren't for him, you know, helping me out with it. Nice. Very good. Very good. You can shout out to me if you want to. <laughs> Luke, I know there's a uh, shout out to Danny. Probably just to everyone in general that works yeah. at Three Will, because between everything I've been having to do this summer for the internship, I've learned a lot. And definitely Will for putting up with the questions, uh -huh. and Jared for putting up with my terrible code. <laughs> That, that now the whole world can see. It, that, that's excellent. <laughs> well, we appreciate everything you guys did this summer. Thank you so much. And thank you for putting up with me today on doing this. Hopefully this was not too painful. And you can share this if you want to with friends and family. Or you can never share it and hope it just goes away. And nobody ever listens to this. Who knows? <laughs> but I appreciate you guys taking the time to do this. Thanks for all your hard work. Thank you for Will for leading up the interns this summer. That was very cool for you to step up there. Thanks to them for making it easy. What so. was that like? So it was my first experience doing anything of the sort. Uh -huh. And uh, looking forward to uh, hopefully doing it again. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate you, uh, you guys uh, chiming in on this podcast. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.